Welcome to setup of the V60 BiPAP on the adult patient in the emergency setting. Hi everyone, it's been a while since I made a video and this is long overdue, the setup of the V60 on the adult patient. Let's turn it on and get started. Okay, first I'm going to acquire my circuit, BiPAP circuit. What's unique about a BiPAP circuit is that it has uh, don't use blue corrugated tubing because it's not smooth on the inside. The amount of flow that comes through a BiPAP won't support that kind of uh, circuit. So you need this one. Now this one has uh, the setup, the T-piece for the STD 30, 20, or 30. And you want to get rid of that. And if you can't pull it off, you'll need to cut it with scissors. See, I was able to pull it off. If you grab it just right, that is going to connect on the nipple adapter right here. I'll also need a filter and I'll connect the end of the circuit that does not have the hard plastic adapter with the bleed hole, the opposite end. When you bring the machine into the room, plug the machine into electrical power and also connect your gas source to a 50 PSI, don't forget you might need an Ohio Quick Connect adapter. After powering the machine on, you can hit the alarm reset up on the top menu bar on the touch screen. Then, choosing one of the five tabs at the bottom, pick the tab that says Modes. We'll take a closer look at the elements of this uh, home screen in a minute. After selecting the Modes tab, you'll see the choices, such as the one I'm choosing, Batch ST. ST is similar to what you would have used on your uh, STD30 or your Vision BiPAP. Selecting this mode, Batch ST, will allow you to see the settings uh, for this mode. Here's a closer look at that screen. Now from this screen, you can change your settings, your IPAP, your EPAP, and so on and make the uh, changes all at once. After accepting the changes, you'll return to your home screen where you'll see all your settings on the bottom of uh, bottom third of the screen or bottom fourth of the screen. Uh, your settings can from this screen be changed individually if you like to. Uh, I'll show you in a minute how to do that. Okay, let's try that all over again. We turned it on. All right, I hit modes, batch ST. Uh, I am going to put in some settings. Now, uh, you should always have at least four or five of EPAP, which is right here. Uh, and then the IPAP should be at least five over the minimum EPAP. So if you notice, I hit that button and now a scale comes up where I can make a change. And I'm gonna turn this to 10. So I have a pressure support of 5 because, it tells me that here, I have a pressure support of 5 because I'm starting at a baseline of 5 EPAP. Let me accept it. So I have 5 of EPAP, uh, 10 of IPAP, and the difference between the two is the pressure support, which is 5. Now, I'm using this on a spontaneously breathing patient, so I'm just going to put in a very minimal uh, respiratory rate in case they were not to breathe, say they got too many sedatives or something. I'm going to leave everything else alone and uh, I'm going to activate it. And you can see those settings here. Now if I change my mind uh, and decide I want an oxygen of more than 30 percent, then I can crank this up by either touching this screen or I can run my finger across this and you can see it's turning up going there too. And either way I can uh, hit accept here or hit the check mark up here and I've accepted the change. Now I'm on 62 percent. Say I wanted 50, so turn it down to 50, accept either there or up here, and then perhaps a IPAP of 12, up to 12 and accept. Okay, I'm on those changes now. If you're familiar with the Vision BiPAP, you probably remember 
that one of the first steps in setting the vision up was to let the machine calculate how much leak you had. It did a leak, a quick leak test. I think it was uh, called start. You pushed a button that said start test. Well, you don't do that with this machine, but it still needs to know how much leak you have. And there's two ways you do that. And I'm going to show you in a second. But I want you to notice something. I have a full mask medium. And on that, there's a number. There's a little symbol. And that symbol represents a leak, and it has a 1. And I'm going to show you where you'll put that 1 into the machine. If you, if you don't do this, the machine can't calculate the leak exactly right, and so the volume may vary. Uh, if you do put the, uh, the correct exhalation uh, port and the correct mask number in, then uh, the machine will work uh, at optimum. Okay, we're back in front of our machine with the settings uh, that we set up a few moments ago. Now, I'm going to, again, tell the machine uh, what mask I'm using. I'm going to go to Menu, and on this menu, one of my uh, settings are Mask Port. That's the third button. I'm going to touch that. Okay, now, here I can... It shows that little symbol like was on the package of the mask right here, and I can put that one right there. So I've entered a one, and I can accept it. Now it asks me what type of uh, exhalation port I have. Now, here's our choices, whisper, swivel. They even have a little picture of it down here. Uh, this is the type, the Respironics uh, disposable exhalation port, the little bleed hole. It's hard to tell, but it's a little picture of it right down here. And uh, it says DEP in the window. And I'm going to accept that one because that's the one I'm using. And now we're set up. I can hit this tab down here and go back to see my changes. Good so far? Great. Let's address alarms before we put the unit on the patient. Here's the screen that you will see when you hit the alarm settings tab. Set your alarms appropriately and by policy. Alarms will be displayed on the status bar here. So now we're getting alarms. You can see the priority of the alarm and the alarms that are here. Pay close attention to the alarms that you're seeing. Here's a screen describing the types of messages or alarms that you might be seeing, the priority of those alarms, and a little explanation to the right. Okay, all that's left is to put the mask on the patient. I'll be using a full mask for this application, and I'll use this guide to determine. You can see it shows you a picture here of how it should fit on the uh, face of the patient. You can use this as a guide on the bag to determine uh, the correct size. I think I'm a medium is the best one. Unlike a nasal mask, where it's better to use the smallest size that'll fit on the patient, I found with the full mask, it's better to go, if you're in between sizes, to go up a size. So, okay, after you've taken the mask out of the package, there's a cover that fits over these two pads uh, that go on the forehead that you'll have to remove. This is a very important piece. and uh, Pay close attention to this. You can adjust this forehead piece. The purpose of this piece is to remove uh, the pressure from the top of the nose here. Uh, what we found is that there's a tendency to over tighten the, the mask and this can cause breakdown right up here on the bridge of the nose. Now to prevent that common problem from occurring this can be adjusted and tightened in such a way that it removes uh, or the, the pressure uh, is on the forehead on top of these pads. So play, pay t uh, close attention to that when you put that on the patient. Okay, place the mask on the patient, then you can adjust it. Be sure not to over tighten the straps too much because the silicone rubber seal will buckle and you'll actually create a leak if you do that. Uh, of course, you'll want the forehead tight and the pressure should be on the pads, not on the bridge of the nose as I said before. Uh, adjust the straps appropriately. Uh, it does uh, leak a little bit, so there's no point to get uh, no point in getting too crazy with uh, how tight it is. Here's the end that attaches to the mask, and you can see the bleed hole there. Do not obstruct this bleed hole. 
attach it to the mask and once it's attached then you can adjust it so that the bleed hole is away from the patient it might bother them if the flow is uh, blowing on them through and that's it that's the setup of the V60 BiPAP system on the adult patient in an emergency setting and that was the purpose of this uh, video is to quickly show you how to set it up in a generic situation but not to act as a complete training uh, this video is intended to help that person who's already been trained on the use of the uh, vision BiPAP, for example, and uh, knows how to use it and needs to transfer those skills over to this equipment. So, good luck.